Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I am in the slow process of doing a little spring cleaning at my house. And it, I always tell you I love how God reminds me of simple truths. And in the wintertime where we usually draw the curtains or draw the blinds, we don't let a whole lot of light in because there's not a whole lot of light to let in in the winter. It gets dark so early. You get home from work at 5 and you have to draw the blinds because it's dark already. But in the spring when things open up and you bring in all of that light, days are longer, the sun is brighter, and you see so much more in the light. And it's what we see when we open up and let all the light in. We see those places in the corners that are a little bit more dirty than we thought they were. Or there's a little more dust where we did not anticipate there being dust because we thought we had been taking care of it all winter. But that's the truth. When we let the light in, God illuminates those places in our lives where we need to do a little spring cleaning, a little touch up here and a little touch up there, where we have to boot out the things that we might have let in and we didn't really mean to, we just sort of lackadaisically let it in. And that's what God reminded me of today when I started to let in the light that I saw a little dust bunny in the corner that I hadn't seen before. I don't know how long it had been there, but it was there. And that's the great and sweet truth of the light of Christ. That that light illuminates the darker places, illuminates those places in us that we need to deal with and boot out, clean out, dust up a little bit. And so that's just a reminder for all of us that we need the light. We need the light constantly shining in our lives. And then we shine through us that light, that we might be the light for someone else, that we might be his light illuminating the darker places in other people, not judgmentally, but lovingly, pointing out that there might be a place or two that someone might need to go to God about and deal with a little bit. So that's my story for today, is a little spring cleaning and a lot of light shining back into our lives. Amen? And amen. So you know that I always tell you that God uses titles or books or songs or Shakespeare or sayings, he always brings a title to mind. And when I was doing this study, and I'll talk about it in a sec, uh, it's called It's My Body and I'll Try If I Want To. Now, in 1963, Leslie Gore, as a teenage girl, wrote a song called It's My Party and I'll Cry If I Want To. Cry if I want to, cry if I want to. You would cry too if it happened to you. Do, 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 do. Right? It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. Well, it's my body and I'll try if I want to. I'll explain that title when we get into the study. But I want you to think about what she said. It's my party, and I'll cry if I want to. In other words, because it's my party, I can do anything I want. Well, that's the issue we have with today's study, is that it's your body, and if you want to try it, go ahead and try it. It's not up to anyone to determine what you can or cannot do to your body, with your body, through your body, for your body. It's all up to you. So this study is continuation of the seven-week study of the nations in the land of Canaan that God left for Israel to dispossess. Now, if you've missed any of the prior studies, just go to brushstrokeministries.com. 
our website, click on their video archives tab, and all of the TV shows will come up with titles and dates, and you can uh, watch them. If you don't have time to sit and watch them, download them as a podcast. You can take them with you and listen on the road or wherever you want to go. There's gardening, cleaning, listen to them. And so this is about the group of people that are called the Hivites. Now we've talked about the Hittites, the Amorites, the Uptites, the Termites, right? We talked about the other ites. And we're coming now upon the group called the Hivites. Now their name in its very basic root means wicked or wickedness, um, enjoying earthly things. Uh, hedonism, humanism, that's where the root of the Hivite name comes from. Their name literally, though, means wicked. That's important, wicked. And the Hivites loved to live it up and uh, acquire whatever they wanted for themselves. They were... Um, <clears throat> they had like if they were living today they'd have sayings like uh, freedom to live uh, living la vida do uh, la vida loca um, the good life um, yeah whatever went this is the Hivite spirit whatever wanted to do <coughs> excuse me they did they fed their flesh whatever their flesh desired that's what they allow themselves to participate in. So let me tell you how that affects us as the church today. First of all, let me give you the unequivocal, unequivocal verse. Uh, Romans 8, 5. The unequivocal verse. Romans 8, 5. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, they set their minds, <coughs> excuse me, on the things of the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh, their whole mindset is on the flesh. If you live by the Spirit, your mindset and your mind is set on the Spirit. This tribe represents self it represents no need for guidance from anyone else, no rules, no boundaries. Like I said, whatever, whatever they wanted to do, they did. Sounds a lot like the world today. My body, you can't tell me what to do with my body. If I want to have an abortion, I can have an abortion. If I want to be a transvestite, I can be a transvestite. If I want to be a man and go into a woman's bathroom, I should be allowed to do that because I identify as a woman and you cannot tell me what to do. If you want to um, do drugs, don't tell me I can't do them. I'm going to do them. If I want to drink, I'm going to drink. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to get behind the wheel of a car. And you can't tell me not to get behind the wheel of a car. Now, those sound almost irrational. But that is the mindset of the world today. And of course, the world always tries to creep in to the church. Well, I'm the head of the deacons, and no one's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to tell you what to do. Or I am the choir director, and I, what I say goes. Um, and you can't tell me otherwise. Well, we all have to answer to somebody but the Hivites only really answered to themselves. They had no need for God. And that's where the crux of the Hivite spirit comes to us. I'll take care of it myself. I don't need God. Uh, I don't need to pray about my finances because I have everything I need. My finances are in good shape. Pay my taxes. Um, got... Um, um, savings, I've got retirement, <clears throat> so why should I pray about God and why should I really need to depend on God? 
when I can depend on my nest egg and depend on what I have in the bank? <sighs> Why should I ask God for meals when I have plenty in my cupboards and plenty in my freezer? I don't need to ask God. He's not my sufficiency when it comes to food. I really don't need him. And as for my job, well, I got a good one, so I'm not even going to pray about my job and thank him for it every day because, well, I just don't need God because I'm in charge of my life. Yeah, that is what comes to creep in to the church. This, I don't need God. Oh, I'm glad you found something that helps you through, but I don't need him. Or I I'm doing fine myself. You're doing it that way. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it this way. Well, we're both kind of getting to the same place in the end. That's a bunch of baloney anyway. The Hivite spirit. It's a subtle subtle, subtle scheme of the enemy. Here's how that spirit works. I'm going to go back to the very beginning in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? That's where it began. You see, what Satan, the enemy, did to Eve was made her question God over herself. Did God really tell you you couldn't eat of that tree? You want that tree? You go eat of that tree. Oh, God didn't say that. Has God really said you shouldn't do that. Has God really said you don't need to eat of that tree, that you, that's, that, that, that's a hands off of that tree? You go ahead and eat whatever you want. Hivite spirit. Hivite generation <laughs> like we've never seen before. And it's a little overwhelming when you see the world today and you see how it's me, my body, me, whatever I want, whatever I desire, whatever I, what I feel like doing, whatever feels good to me, I'm going to do it. Self, self, and more self. Whatever the heart wants. I've heard that a million times. Oh, but my heart wants it. Oh, whatever the heart wants. Go for whatever the heart desires. God will give you the desires of your heart. That's misquoted. God doesn't, it doesn't say God gives you the desires, your desires of your heart. It says he gives his desires into your heart. And that's the truth, that God will give you the desires you're to have in your heart, not your own. He'll give you his desires in your heart. Because our heart, mm, Jeremiah 17, 9. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitfully wicked or deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand the heart? Who? It's deceitfully wicked above all things. So how do we come against this Hivite spirit? Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, and I'll get back to that, therefore. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service, or your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that by the testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, when you're studying scripture, when, there were, when the word therefore appears, you need to stop and ask, what's the therefore, therefore? Why is that word there at that moment? Because therefore is like a conjunction. It connects what came before to what is about to come after. And so therefore, something has happened in prior verses or prior chapters that sets therefore do it this way. Therefore do it the opposite way. It's like an if, and, or but. Therefore. So in chapters 1 through 11, Paul is setting up chapter 12. Chapter 12 in Romans is like the pivot chapter. He starts out in Romans 1, you know, saying that he's giving, giving some over to the depraved mind. That because they refuse uh, to come to him, because they refuse his love, because they refuse to change, because they refuse to be obedient, he finally says, I can do nothing. I've tried to woo you. I've tried to love you and love on you. Now, his love never fails. His love never stops. But at some point, he says, I'm giving you over to a depraved mind. And then it's like the first 11 chapters or first 10 chapters. First 11, he's talking about all the depravity and the hard way that people try to live. And then in verse chapter 12, he says, therefore, instead of doing this to your bodies, instead of doing this with your life, Instead of throwing your life away and sin and coming through hard things in a bad way, therefore, here's what I want you to do, he says. I want you to present your bodies to God. I want you to give your body to God. And then in chapter 12, oh, it just oozes with amazing things about how we are to conduct our lives with our bodies. These, I'm going to read to you a list, and these are all active. These are not passive things. These are active um, moments in our lives, a a actively serving God. How? Through our body. We are to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy. Can we just stop? Holy, not unholy, holy. We are to present our bodies holy. That means we strive to let him work in us and clean us out, to get out the cobwebs and the dirt and the dust and the filth, to create in us a holy vessel that's acceptable for him, holy and acceptable. So chapter 12 of Romans says things like this. Show mercy with cheerfulness. Let your love be genuine. Give to the saints. Bless those who persecute you. Weep with those who weep. Associate with the lowly and the untouchables or unmentionables. Repay no one evil for evil. Never avenge yourselves. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. And build your lives on mercy and be merciful. That's chapter 12 of Romans. That, so when Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 say, Therefore, I appeal to you, Paul says. I am appealing. I am begging you. I am pleading with you. I am beseeching you, petitioning you. I appeal to you, therefore, Brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or worship. Don't be conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then at the end of verse 2, it says that you might know what the will of God is. What is good and acceptable and perfect? What's the will of God? Presenting your bodies. 
holy, and acceptable. That's the perfect will of God. And by offering ourselves to God, going, God, use me. I tell you, I've told you before, I'll tell you again. Before I crawl out of bed, I crawl on the altar of sacrifice. Before I crawl out, I crawl on. Before I crawl out, I crawl on. Before I crawl out of bed, I take a moment and use my bed as the living altar or the altar, and I'm the living sacrifice. And I say something like, God, I give myself to you today. God, pour yourself into me. Use me. Make of me what you will today. Whatever I have to give, I give you today, Lord God. Listen, it might be that God's perfect will is for you to stay home and rest and eat three good meals a day, not on the run. It might be that God's perfect will is for you to clean out your car, do something that might be um, fulfilling to you, like house cleaning or whatever. I, I don't know. But whatever God has for me on that day, I want to fulfill. I want to be sacrificial in my living. Because it might be that God has something that he wants me to do. Last Monday, I got a text or a message at 4.17 in the morning. Now, I always sleep with my phone next to my head, just in case something comes in. And at 4.17, my phone goes off. Now, if I did not live a sacrificial life, I would have clicked it off and stayed sleeping, not dealt with it not worried about it until I woke up but because God has trained me and has grown me to know that my life is not my own my time is not my own it's his now, I didn't learn this in a day I've learned this through the years God's had to teach me hard when it comes to that because I love my own time and God's had to teach me hard about this about being sacrificial. But that's how I know I can come against the Hivite spirit. Because I am less concerned about my own body, about my own self, than I am about someone else or someone else's body. Whether it be I need to get up and pray for someone at 2 o'clock in the morning. God will redeem my sleep every time. But someone might need me to pray for them at 2 o'clock. And if God awakens me at two and puts a name on my heart, I'm going to get up and pray. Because that person's body is more important than my sleep. And I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back. Like I said, God had to teach me long and hard about that. It was not an easy learn for me because I was selfish with my time and selfish especially with my sleep. Huh. I don't get a whole lot of sleep, so when I'm sleeping, I want sleep. But God reminded me that there's a time to sleep and a time to be awake, and that he'll give his beloved sweet sleep, and that he'll redeem my sleep somehow, somewhere. That's how we come against the Hivite spirit. Hebrews 13, 15, Hebrews 13, 15. Through Christ, let us then continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of the lips that acknowledge his name. Let us continually let our bodies be a vessel of his praise and lifting up his praise. But the very next verse is what gets me. It's Hebrews 13, 16. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. That's what God is pleased with. Therefore, I appeal to you. I, I plead with you, Paul says, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. And then in Hebrews, now I believe Paul wrote Hebrews 
And I believe he says in Hebrews the same thing. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. And for such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Those sacrifices are pleasing to him. When you do good in Jesus' name, with your mouth, with your hands, with your presence, with your body, it, it all becomes a holy living sacrifice to him. And then we can kind of put a, a, a check that said, yeah, I'm, I'm not a Hivite. And I'm not going to let that Hivite spirit slither its way into my life where I become self-centered, self-thinking, self-oriented. I can do what I want. It's my body. And I'll try if I want to. It's his body. It's his body. And I'll give it to him because I want to. Amen? Amen. If you do not know huh, this wonderful God, his name is Jesus. He is a spectacular Savior, a miraculous healer, and a loving Father. And he is calling you by name to come and to be in relationship with you. Will you let us help you find him, lead you to him? He is longing for relationship with you. Get on the website, give us a call at the office, whatever you have to do. Let us lead you to the one who is painting a beautiful picture of your life with his one brushstroke at a time. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's program, One Brushstroke at a Time. If you have been blessed by this study, would you share your story with us? We want to hear how God is moving in hearts all around the globe. If you have a question, would like more information, or would like to request prayer, please visit our website at brushstrokeministries.com or connect with us on Facebook at Brushstroke Ministries. You may also contact us at Brushstroke Ministries, P.O. Box 2353, Buchanan, West Virginia, 260. Join Jenny Fister every week at this time to hear a fresh revelation as she paints a beautiful picture of his word, one brushstroke at a time.